Hey guys, it's Ben with Ben's Viewfinder here, and we are on a new platform today, so you're going to have to be a little bit patient with me if I screw a few things up or uh, if things don't quite go as smoothly as usual. I uh, switched over. I'm on a MacBook now. I'm normally on my desktop on my uh, Windows computer, but uh, I'm slowly trying to make the change. I like Macs more. I just uh, It's always been a software compatibility issue, but we're starting the transition, so go easy with me today. We're using new screen capture software. We're using a uh, new computer. I don't quite have as much workspace to work with on here. So you have to give me a little bit of an adjustment period. But I'm part of a couple of different photography groups on Facebook and Google Plus and such. And I put out an option today for requests for uh, editing videos. Because uh, obviously I want to keep my blogs up to date, but I want to try to get stuff to people that they actually want to know and not just what I'm assuming they want to know. So I had an interesting request because I don't do very much of this work at all. And today uh, I had a woman named Lisa request that I do a video on how to do composite work and make it look more natural or more realistic. And so we're going to go ahead and jump right into that. I'm Like I said, I'm not an expert at it, but hopefully this will get you pointed in the right direction, Lisa, or anyone else who's interested in composite work, and uh, we'll go from there. So you're going to see here I have four images. We have our main image we're going to use, which is this here, this pure shot that I took in Savannah. And then just for fun, I figured we'd take the sky from this shot that I took in Michigan and put it behind this pier here in this picture. And then I figured maybe we put an eagle flying through the air just for fun. And then I figured maybe we put the giraffe walking through the pier uh, and really make it interesting. Now, that's a very complicated thing to do. And to make it look really, really good is uh, an extremely long process. I was doing the uh, setup for this and getting prepped for it. So I had uh, at least some ideas. I didn't completely wing this. Uh, and it was pretty long for me to kind of work through the different steps of it. But we're going to go at it. So what we're going to do is I'm in Adobe Bridge right now. I was talking about how I love Bridge so much the other day in a video. So I figured I'd show you one of the great things to start off with. So we're going to go ahead and take for composites. This is perfect because we have multiple things you want to bring into a single image. So I go to the folder where my composite for this image is. Select all these items. We're going to go up to Tools. We'll go to Photoshop. We'll load these files into Photoshop layers. All right. Such a small screen. Now I'm going to do this kind of as quickly as I can possibly can to describe it to you. I uh, am going to probably kind of half-ass things a little bit though and they're not going to look perfect and you're just going to have to forgive me for that because I really don't want to make a three hour long video uh, to, to try and show you this stuff. So first thing we're going to do is move our main image to the front which is going to be the pure photo. Also I do want to point out really quick uh, that this very small photo of this eagle is not a photo I took. I Google imaged this. That was uh, an open rights picture, so I'm just borrowing it, but I did not want to take credit for that photo. I just want to make sure that the giraffe, the uh, this photo here for this um, sky, and this photo here I did take. But I don't know. I just was looking for something random to throw together. So, all right. If you hear me fidgeting around a lot, I've got my back sore today, so I'm kind of fidgeting. All right. So, First thing we're going to do is take out this sky because this sky is kind of bland and dull and it was kind of dreary and rainy. But um, before I do that, though, let me explain something. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm getting, going out of order. What you want to do when you're doing composite work, one of the most important things or things that people have problems with is lighting. You're gonna you want to take something that was taking in one situation and put it into a different situation. So in the situation you're seeing here with this pier, this was taken on a very cloudy day. Uh, forgive all my lens spots, by the way. It's like my demon is uh, lens spots or sensor spots. Uh, so, but this was a dreary day. It wasn't very exciting. Not a lot of sun cast or whatever. And then this photo here, obviously, was taken on a nice sunny day, and or, or or on a pretty sunny day, and the sunlight's coming from the right. Uh, and then if you zoom in on this eagle here you can see this was taken on a pretty sunny day and you can see the light hitting him kind of underneath his wings here uh, or even coming straight on at his beak and so and with this giraffe let me fit screen here you can see that the lights coming from behind the giraffe so the goal here is to find things where you can modify the light to look vaguely similar 
because when you put these images on top of each other, when you try to impose these images into another image, uh, the lighting, if it's off, if you have one thing where the lighting is coming from the left and one thing where the lighting is coming from the right, it's just not going to look right. People are going to look at it and their eyes are going to get confused. They're going to be like, that doesn't look right. So the goal is to find things you can work with. And so our main image we're using, there's no real light source because it's just a cloudy day. And then everything, the other two things I'm using, which is this, lighting source is coming from the right hand side. And the other main part of the photo is going to be this, which again, the light source is coming from the right. So that's why I chose those two things. And then with the eagle, the lighting source is kind of um, not, it is very balanced. And so I'll show you a trick on how to kind of make the lighting a little bit less balanced, but how to make it look a bit more realistic. But since it's going to be a smaller part of the photo, it's not quite as important. So, all right, let's do this. So I'm going to do some of these tricks I'm going to be showing you about selection and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into great detail about um, simply because uh, th those are tricks for another day. But so first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this sky here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to lay, uh, we'll go to select and we're going to select, uh, we could do quick selection, we could do um, uh, magic wand selection. Uh, but a good way to do stuff when it comes to like skies, things like that, is to select based on color range. Because the sky is going to be a different color range than the pier. And since our image is broken into two main different areas, it's really easy to deselect colors in one half of the image. So I'm going to pick part of the sky here and select. And as you can see, it did a pretty, in our little preview here, it's showing you the white stuff, the stuff it's going to select, and the other stuff is a... Uh, the black stuff is going to be the stuff it's not going to select. And that's fine. We'll just go ahead and start from there. And you're going to see, it's going to give you a boom, this weird kind of selection stuff. What it's going to do is select all this little stuff in between these fences for me, for the most part. And it's not going to be perfect. But we can just go ahead and switch over to, let me make sure I have a black foreground layer. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll switch over to the quick selection tool here. And we can just add and take away from this selection. So we will take away, we'll use, let's see, I gotta get my keys right here, so option key. We'll use, hold down the option key so that our little su minus sign is up on our um, quick selection key. If you see in the middle of it, now my MacBook, it's not very big, but in the middle of that circle is a plus sign, meaning that I wanna add selection to it. So in this, like, I wanna add, oops. Let me undo that, Command Z. Quick selection. And so we wanna add to it, right? So there we go. I don't know, I just added a bunch of stuff I didn't want to though. So let's go ahead and undo that. I'm sorry, I'm screwing this up. We don't want to add all that. We just want to add a little bit. I'm just clicking once here, just to select down to the water. And yes, it's selecting some of the pier. But what you can do is, if you make your brush smaller when you're doing selections, it will make your selections more refined. And so now I'll go in here and I'll unselect some of this stuff under this pier. And we'll get it kind of worked out here. We'll add a little bit of selection over here. Add a little bit of selection over here. We'll add this stuff up here. Um, we'll add this stuff in here. I think we need to deselect some of this pier though. Okay, so the point is, again, this isn't perfect. You're going to want to go in, you're going to want to, if you're doing this for professional work or whatever and you really want to make it perfect, you're going to want to uh, really go in and refine your edges and make sure you have everything selected. You want to select everything not selected. So the goal here is to get rid of this guy, but to keep the piers and everything else. So. What we're going to do is, so what we did is we just spent all the time selecting the sky, but what we want to save is the actual pier in the ground. So I'm going to do what's called inversing the selection. And so, and it's always a good idea before I do this to duplicate layers. Always duplicate layers. That way we have an original layer to be able to mask stuff back in or original details or things like that. So make sure you have that. Also, a good idea when you're doing things like this is you can save selections. So if you need to come back and reselect this sky for some reason and make some adjustments to your selection, you can do that. So I know I'm going ADD, but you go up to select, go to save selection, and we can just call it selection sky. And that way, 
if I need to come back to this photo and select the sky again, I can do it very easily and I will have this selection exactly. And then if I want to go back in and refine the edges down here and take some of these out or whatever, I could do that. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and leave it as is. Okay, so we have a selection saved. We have our image duplicated. And now what we're going to do is go, we want a new layer. And we want that layer from our selection to be cut out. Did I inverse my selection yet? I did not, I bet you. Let's do that first. Go to select. We'll go to inverse. And now it has selected the pier and the ground and stuff. And I see a little bit of stuff down here I need to add. Um, and so now we've selected the pier and the water and the beach or whatever. And that, because that's what we want to move and then we'll get rid of the um, sky. So we're going to go to layer, we're going to go to new layer, and we're going to go new layer via cut. And so what that means is it's going to take what I have selected, it's going to cut it out, and it's going to put it on a new layer by itself. So now, if I deselect all these layers underneath this, we now have two layers. There's the layer of um, our pier, and there's just the sky. And you can see we missed a whole bunch, whatever. It's not a big deal, like I said. We're just looking to kind of get it ballpark for now. And so now we have two layers. And if you deselect this layer, you can see we have just the pure and stuff. So we're pretty good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll move this sky down out of the way. We don't really care. We move this duplicate down out of the way so that we're working with just our pure. And now we have our sky below it. So let's go ahead and turn the sky on. And now we're cooking with fire. We're already we're in the right um, area now. Now we're starting to have a sky back there that we need. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out here so I have more area to work with. I've got to learn my keyboard shortcuts on Mac, so you'll have to forgive me if I'm a little um, screwy on those. And so we'll go ahead and make sure we have the sky layer selected now because we're going to want to morph this because we don't want all these trees and stuff back there. That looks kind of weird or whatever. So we want it just to be beach. So We'll go ahead and we'll um, select the, the move tool here so we can move this around. We'll get the sky kind of going in the upper left hand corner. And then we're going to go to free transform, or you can do command T. And we'll go ahead and we'll blow this sky up nice and larger so that we can have that cover more space. Now, in this case, I kind of like the way these clouds look in here. We'll go ahead and apply that. And so I think these clouds look good back here like this. Uh, I know we still have this tree here. So what we're going to do is we'll just uh, take away the visibility of our pier so we can see the layer below it. And I'm just going to simply clone stamp out the top part of this tree. And we'll just add uh, some of these clouds. We'll just cover this top part of this tree up. All right, so I just selected the clone stamp tool. I used the S key to select that. I made my brush a little bit bigger. I will use Control to select my area I want to pull from. So I'll pull from over here. And we'll simply just brush away. Oh, I need to turn my opacity up. And so we'll just brush away some of this sky. Go over here and pull some of this sky. Oop. That didn't look good. And it doesn't need to look pretty. Like I said, it, you could spend more time on it if you want. I am getting a lot of flow. You notice I'm pulling in a lot of stuff I don't really want to pull in, so you're going to have to... Oh, it's because I'm hitting the command key and not the option key to select my area to pull from. Sorry. Okay. So that's good. We can... You know, you don't want stuff to look too... You see there were repeating patterns going on. You never want any of that, so kind of grab from some different areas and um, kind of make it look a little bit different or do whatever you want, but you don't want to look exactly the same. And so now... When we put that pier back over, that tree is gone now, and we just have sky going along that horizon. You see how I did that? So that's our sky. We just got out, clone stamped out the tree or whatever. We go ahead and we put our uh, pier back over. And again, this looks terrible, um, but really, it's just a matter of going right, in so and refining all of your details in here. Or so whatever. we've got our sky. We've got our pier. Next thing we're going to do is make our eagle appear. And so... Let me make all these layers disappear other than this eagle. We'll go ahead and we'll move this eagle. Oh, you gotta make sure you have the right layer selected. 
go ahead and move this eagle over here in the middle of our screen. We'll go ahead and Command T to free transform him. We can make him a little bigger. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the pier to this eagle to select him out. Because obviously we don't want the stuff that's behind him. We want him to look like he's flying through our sky. So we'll go to Select. We'll go to Color Range. And this one's really easy. And part of the reason why I picked this eagle is because the sky is exactly the same color behind him. Uh, so we can just click on that it is going to uh, select specifically that sky or whatever. And in here, you can actually choose to invert this and choose what you want to select. So uh, right inside of here. But So now we have that selected. And again, it didn't do a perfect job. And you can go through and you can clean some of this stuff up. Let's see here. Let me go down. And so you can go through and you can... Man, that really did not a good job at all right there. This worked slightly better on my PC. And so you can go through here and really fine tune these edges here with your selection tool. And it shouldn't be too horribly hard to do. Again, I don't really want to go into spending an hour just going through and selecting stuff. But just wanted to give you an idea of how this works. Oops, I don't know where that went. Command Z. All right. Well, I'm going to stop messing with this. I don't know what I'm doing. But, again, our foreground color is all screwed up. Change it back to black. We're going to inverse our selection because, again, we have our sky selected right now. So we want to inverse it to select just the eagle. And then we want to move the eagle to... I don't know if that worked. Did it? My scroll wheel's backwards. Well, let's see. Again, we should duplicate our eagle. Yes, this is taking a long time. I apologize again. Layer new via a cut. Did we get just an eagle? We did. It looks terrible. Again, the more time you spend on stuff, the better your result's going to be. Spend more time refining your edges around your selections and cutting them out properly, and they'll look 100 times better. But the goal here is to show you just kind of how to stack stuff on top of each other and how to kind of move them into position and change the lighting here. So, all right, so now we have just our eagle cut out in the sky here, and we want to move him to the top, and now he's in our photo. And again, I am having terrible luck here. I cannot get my mouse and keyboard to cooperate with me. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move this eagle because he's right in the middle of the pier and that's not very useful. So we'll go ahead and we'll put him kind of over here. It's like he's flying through the sky a little bit. Uh, again, this actually looked a lot better on my PC. It's kind of funny that uh, you do the same thing twice in a row and then you come in and it doesn't look very good. Uh, and if you go through and you refine those edges around here and got rid of some of this stuff, you can uh, always use uh, bring through the background by layer masking here if I wanted to, I think. Let's see, it's probably not going to work either because I'm telling you how to do it. And we can get rid of some of these little halo pixels around here, see, and we'll bring through the sky. But again, this is a trick of patience here doing this because you're going to start making the edge around his wing fuzzy by doing this, which I can see is already doing it, but I don't care. I'm just showing you that we can get rid of a little bit of that halo problem right here. But then you're going to want to go back through, switch your colors over. Right now we're doing a black just to layer mask. You switch it over to white and you'll bring back through stuff and you can go on the inside to his wing and really kind of clean these edges up like that. And you can sit here and do this across the entire image and really make it look a lot better. But, so, our main issue here though, and I'm actually going to delete that because you need to um, 
flatten that layer mask before you start doing dodging and burning. And the goal with dodging and burning is to darken and lighten pixels. And we're going to do that to make it look more like he's being lit from one side. So in this photo, our goal was that our light was coming from the right hand side. And if you kind of look at the bottom of him, even though it kind of already looks like that a little bit, we can emphasize that a little bit more by just burning uh, the side of him that's away from the sun. And so, and the great part with this is you can burn choose a huge brush if you want to and burn this and since he's on a separate layer right now and he's cut out it's not going to affect the sky at all so we can just simply go like this and we'll darken this side of him and it's not you don't want to do drastic you don't want to make it look horrible but as you can see now it looks more like he's being lit from one side than the other we didn't necessarily lose the details over here in his wings or anything like that we don't want to do that and you may want to go in here, like around here, where it's really kind of um, dark in here or whatever, and really kind of mess with this a lot more. I didn't do a very good job of that. Uh, and actually maybe turn down the exposure and stuff like that to make that part look a little bit better. But as you can see, when you come out here now, it looks like he's being lit from the side. And so that's kind of important. Um... <laughs> this is really not going as well as I thought it was going to. It, it worked a lot better when I was just working on it on my own. Uh, so, all right, the last thing we're going to do here is mess with the giraffe. And this is kind of an important one. This is kind of a complicated one. And based on how well everything else has been going so far, I'm guessing uh, this is going to go horribly because, well, that's how my luck's been so far with this video. Okay, so now we have just our dress. So we have our pier cut out, we have our sky in post, and we have an eagle involved. Okay, great. Now... Uh, and again with the in this situation here I know the sky is really vibrant and this all looks really dull so you may want to change some saturation do some localized actual uh, adjustments to your photos to try to make them look like they belong a little bit more but okay so with the giraffe here the color selection idea that I showed you to uh, be able to cut him out is not going to work in this situation there's just too much going on so if I go to select and I try to select via uh, color range and click on this wall, you can see it's not going to do a very good job. You can see how there's so many problems, so many pixels and things like that going on here. So in this situation, I would simply just use a normal quick selection tool and try to select out. Uh, are around him and then go in and refine it. So I'm going to do a really crappy job of that really quick. And so we'll go ahead and try selecting around him. You're probably not going to have the greatest of luck. But alright. At least we have a basis though. And so then we'll come in. My scroll is backwards on my PC. If you scroll down, it scrolls down. If you scroll up, it scrolls up. And on a Mac, I'm using a Logitech mouse I just plugged into my MacBook. And if you scroll, it goes the other direction for some reason. So we go to our quick selection. We are going to add some selection here. Or take away. We're coming, we're, I forget we're backwards, sorry. So we're going to take away some of this selection kind of get up to his mane, bring his head in, and again this is one of those things that just is a time consuming process. Now I do have an add-on I can recommend to you that is super useful for this stuff and it and I can show it to you in a minute here but let me oops at least kind of get this half worked out here and again I'm gonna keep scrolling the wrong way on accident because I'm just not used to it. And so go down, keep going through here. Refine your edges. And the tool I'm telling you about that you can use for this is called Topaz Remask. And I actually have a brief video on it uh, somewhere in my video blog section so if you're curious or I, or I may have a whole just video just on masking um, so if you're curious to see that more in detail head over 
uh, and look that one up because that tool is built for doing stuff like this it's perfect and I use it a lot when I do digital backgrounds on uh, you wouldn't like if I shoot a model in a studio or I shoot people or whatever and I decide I want to change out the background I do uh, I use Topaz Remask to do all of that work so very useful tool I don't think it's a horribly expensive tool either so as you can see I'm fumbling through but we are slowly but surely and this is the stuff composite work in general is art all in itself because of the fact that you need to like it takes so much detail orientation to really make it look good and I mean you can make really crappy composite work pretty quick as I'm doing um, but if you're if you really care about this stuff you would take the time to actually go through here refine these edges really well there's a lot of really good ways to use um, selection tools in Photoshop and a lot of ways to do this a lot better but oops see I'm scrolling along wrong way again but I'm at least gonna give you an idea and what's gonna be important about this guy that we're gonna do here in a minute is that since he's gonna be on the ground we're gonna try to make him interact with something because a lot of times if you add something that shouldn't be in an image to an image and you just plop it in there it's gonna look out of place but if you take that uh, object and try to interact it with it, the environment around it you can make it seem more like it belongs there. I actually lost my cursor there for a minute. Uh, so that's kind of important when you do composite work because then you can try to make things that don't belong kind of seem like they belong a little bit more. So let's see here. Sorry, I know I'm taking a long time. This one's a little complicated, but we're getting there. It's also auto refining my edges, which is kind of screwing with me a little bit. And I'm going to be missing a lot of this stuff because the problem is the reason why we're having um, some difficulties with this selection stuff here is that the tonalities are the same. And so in this case, this would not be the most perfect image in the world to use. But I just liked the idea of it when uh, I was trying to come up with the uh, an idea of a composite in this situation. I liked the idea of the giraffe walking under the pier. Uh, so, but if you are a person who's going to shoot composite work and you're going to try to set stuff up for composite work, obviously, when you do it, do not choose. Um, an image or, or set up a, a shot for an image of an object you're going to use with tonalities like this because it'll just it'll make your job a lot harder so try to shoot stuff with um, blank backgrounds behind it white backgrounds black backgrounds really anything that uh, really superimposes whatever you're wanting to take out and move to somewhere else uh, so Yep, this is taking a while, I apologize, but for people who really care, this will be worth it. Or it won't. <laughs> but like I said, you have to be patient with me today. Alright, we're going to kind of, so as you can see, you can go in here and keep refining these edges and refining these edges. I don't know what of his tail is selected, if any of it. Per usual, this is all a game of patience. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about getting his tail perfect or whatever. I just want to make sure I have a tail to work with. Okay, so we're going to cut this out here in a second. <laughs> and it's not going to look good. There's going to be a, um, a lot of probably missing areas and things like that. But 
we have him selected at least in a general form he will look like a giraffe kind of so again duplicate your layer before you do anything like uh, like cutting out so and, and just drag your original down so that way we still have a giraffe an original giraffe we still have an original pier we still have an eagle although I did not duplicate my background sky layer that was bad of me but anyways that's alright make sure you do when you do it alright again we can save this selection if we want to come back we'll call him giraffe I don't know I just spelled giraffe wrong uh, but the selections don't take up any extra space it's going or it, like you don't have to do anything special with those selections it's not going to like create this massive database with all these selections in it it's just going to be attached to this Photoshop document so when you save your Photoshop document it'll save those selections with the Photoshop document and that way you can come back in select your draft if you need to so pardon me I'm taking a drink really quick all right so we got them all set we're going to inverse so now we have our giraffe selected. We're going to do just like we were doing, new layer from cutout. Now we have a giraffe all by his lonesome. Dun da da da. See, we're making progress. And now we'll bring our other layers visible in our composite. We're gonna go ahead and move this giraffe around a little bit. So, check this out starting to get somewhere. We've got a giraffe, we've got a pier, we've got a sky, we've got an eagle. No, they don't look perfect. So what we're going to do is, obviously that giraffe's humongous, and that is not going to work out. He is not 35 feet tall. So <laughs> he's, uh, and this was like a baby giraffe to begin with. So we want to make him smaller. So we'll go to edit, we'll go to free transform, and we'll hold our shift key because we want to keep our perspective, and we will make him smaller there we go. See, now he looks like he can fit under the pier. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him into position because, like I said, I want him to interact with the environment, make it seem a little bit more natural, make him seem like he's actually there. Because this rate like this, even though you can mess with this and make this look, excuse me, I burped. You can make this look more realistic just sitting here by doing some stuff with his feet and kind of doing some shadow work or whatever but I think it adds a really cool effect when you can manage to make these objects start working together so I'm going to move him up here a little bit so that his feet are kind of like this and what I'm doing here let me zoom in on this we'll go ahead and apply that transformation actually you know what? I'm going to make him just a little bit smaller let me read do this again he's a little bigger than I want for this there we go and so what I'm doing we're gonna move him my goal is I want these feet to kind of be behind with this pillar so that is why I'm doing that so okay we'll apply that transformation I'm gonna zoom in here and show you what I'm doing because believe it or not there's an actual plan to this I'm gonna move the giraffe down to just above my pure level now because layers work from the top down. So as you can see, the giraffe is next to the pier, feet kind of in the water in the beach area here. And what I want it to do is actually look like he's behind this pillar of the pier. So it actually looks like he's walking under it. And so, well actually first thing I'm gonna do is change my lighting. Let me change, let me state that. Because if I add a layer mask, I'm gonna have issues. So ignore what I was just saying we are gonna do that but again in the grand scheme of things our light is coming from the right and even though he's already lit from the right he's under this pier kinda and so that's not gonna work out and if you look down here in the water you can see that there's some shadow being cast from the pier and so we kinda want that to continue with him and then again this is not gonna be perfect but we'll go ahead and we'll just kinda do it quickly we're gonna select a burn layer on or a burn selection with him we're just going to burn this middle part of his body to make it darker. We're going to leave some of the back, though. Oh, that's too much. Let me step backwards. Oh, shift command Z. That doesn't seem to be working. 
All right. So we got burn. Let's bring down the exposure a bit. Because if you mess with this exposure percentage up here when you're doing uh, burns and dodges, it'll change the intensity of what it works with. And so we want to bring down, we don't want to just make it so dark, so bad. So we we'll bring down the intensity a little bit. And we'll go ahead and do it all but his head. No, it's not perfect. But again, if you look at it from far out, you can see it looks like the light's hitting him kind of back here, not hitting him as much here. And there's better ways to do this. And again, spending more time with it and really working through it. Like there's some obviously some problems here. But it looks like his head's getting a little bit of sunlight as he's coming out. Looks like his hindquarters have a little bit of sun on it. And then the middle is going to be, and maybe the bottom of his feet are getting a little bit. But again, you can darken those too. So really try to adjust your lightness and darknesses to match what's going on in the scene. And in this case, honestly, most of his front, we could almost burn the entire front half of this. Because he's basically all under the pier. To try and make this look. So maybe just his back, his butt is basically getting hit by the sun from behind. So, nope, not perfect, but it works for now. All right, so we're done burning, dodging, doing whatever. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start layer masking to bring to have him interact with our environment a little bit more. So, we'll select our layer, our giraffe layer. We're going to create a layer mask. We want to have our brush selected. We want to have it black background. We want our opacity to be we'll go ahead and turn it up a bit to kind of just get it started and we are going to bring this through. No, it's not going to look pretty at first. You're going to notice there's going to be some problems with some of these edges. Not a problem. We'll fix it. But we want a basis to start working from. Alright, so now if you look before we even clean it up from back here, now it looks a lot more like he's walking under the pier, doesn't it? Now with his legs and his body being behind that part of the pier, but in front of these piers, it looks more like he's there. It looks more like that's actually happening. Isn't that kind of cool? All right. I have no idea how long we've been recording this video software I have. I don't know. Uh, let's see. We've been recording for 38 minutes. Jeez, man. I hope you really want to learn some composite stuff. So basically, come back in after you do this layer mask. I'm going to speed this up a little bit because I didn't realize we were quite going that long. Come back in, you can swap your color base and start bringing, cleaning this up. Make your brush smaller. Again, it'll affect less area. S swap back over. All I'm doing is hitting the X key to switch between whether or not I'm bringing something through or putting something back. And so I'm bringing something through along the pillar's edge and I'm bringing, but when I switch to white, I'm bringing back in giraffe. So if I overdo this, like I did just a tiny bit there, hit the X key, you see that? And I can start bringing through more giraffe, but we'll hit the X key again. Again, make my brush smaller, will affect less area. And obviously, again, this is just like everything else you've been doing, it's detail oriented. The more time you spend here, the more time you spend cleaning up these edges, making this pillar edge look nice and solid, but making sure that your giraffe's body looks nice and clear, like it's not being covered up by something, will make the difference between making um, a crappy composite that everybody can tell the moment they look at it. And obviously, there's a, not a giraffe and an eagle flying in Savannah, Georgia under a pier. You know what I mean? Like, so to begin with, people are going to know that your image is fake, I guess. And it doesn't always have to be that way. If you choose different subject matter, it'll probably look a lot better. But I, this was just my idea, and I'm running with it. So, all right, what are we at here? So make sure that his legs look like they're behind this. Oops. 
good news is it's all non-destructive. So now, even though it's not perfect, we have a pretty clean edge here. You have him behind there. Now, what I'm going to recommend in the same situation is you can tell by looking at the bottom of his feet, his feet look like they're on top of the object. That's not good. We don't want that. We want him to look like he's standing. Sand sinks in. The water rolls around his feet. We want to kind of give that. Again, we're just going to keep using our layer mask. We'll get back on our brush. We'll bring down the opacity a little bit so we can kind of work with it. And we're going to just bring some of this up around his hoof to make his hoof look like it's more involved in the actual ground. Do the same thing over on this hoof. And no, that's not a huge difference. When you're out here and you're looking at this, it's not a huge difference. But it's those details that make the difference between having, because when you come in here more and you start looking, I can't um, zoom quite the level. I want. But when you're looking at it more up close and you're kind of just looking at him now, his hooves don't look like, they look more like they're being interacted with with the environment. Unless like they're just magically standing on top of all of that stuff, right? All right, one last thing and I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> we want, and this is kind of tough to do this because of his situation, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyways and it's going to probably look like crap. But what you want is your giraffe to cast a shadow. Because of the fact that everything in this image is casting a shadow, in this case the eagle, I'm not worried about the shadow because if he was casting it would be off to the side of this frame. But for your giraffe specifically, let me duplicate this layer. So we have a, a regular giraffe to work with. We're going to delete the layer mask though. We'll go ahead and put him underneath though. All right, so what we want though, we now have two, I know we have a million layers going on over here. We have our eagle layer, we have our main giraffe in interacting with the pure. We have our, uh, uh, our second giraffe here. We'll go ahead and put him on top so you can see him. So those are right next to each other. Our sky layer, then all this stuff is just backup stuff. So you can just uh, honestly just ignore everything under here. All right, so what we want here is to make this giraffe guy into a shadow. Now what do you think my odds of actually doing this are? So first things first, I want to make sure I have him selected, which I currently don't. Otherwise it's going to apply what I want to do to the whole uh, layer. So I'm going to just magic tool select the area, which is selecting all the transparency basically. Uh, and since we've have him cut out pretty decently and that's all it's there, it's going to select all that. We'll go ahead and inverse like we have been. So right now just the giraffe is selected. What we're going to do is we're going to put over a gradient, like a black and white gradient to make it to, to make it give the effect of a shadow, like a fall off shadow, right? And so first thing we're going to do is we want to lock our transparent pixels so that way when the when the uh, when the pixels or as the shadow falls away, you're not going to just have white. And I'll show you, and we're going to, we'll finish that in a second. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, so I have him selected. I locked my transparent pixels. I'm going to go to my gradient tool. I want to make sure I have the black to white fade. I want to make sure I have the linear gradient tool selected. And then we're just going to simply drag a gradient from down to top from bottom to top. So you can see it's darker. If you ever look at a shadow in nature, it's darker at somebody's feet and it falls off as it gets further away, right? So we now have a shadow, we have a gradient. And so what we're gonna do is, I am going to, well first thing, I guess I'll do it here. I'm gonna blur this shadow a little bit because we're gonna try to anyways around here these edges are really going to be um, too hard. We don't really want that. So we're going to go to blur and we'll Gaussian and blur the shadow a little bit to make it look a little less drastic. 
All right. And it's even better if you go through over your edges and really go through and um, mess with those two. Okay, so our next problem we're going to run into is that we need to actually adjust our layer. So we're going to go to Edit. We'll go to Free Transform. And then let's see if, it's, if I can get this key properly. I think it's the Option key. Nope. That's not it. Control key maybe. Do. I don't know if I know how to do this on a Mac. I just realized this. It's the command key. And so what this allows me to do is it anchors my bottom and I'm just affecting my top. So I'm holding my command key. I believe it's the control key on uh, a PC. And we want to drag this in the direction that the light is falling on our subject. So in this case it would be it's not going to be a huge shadow because it's the the light source is coming from such an angle here. So we're going to bring him out here. And so now we have that. Let me zoom in on it. Yes, we'll apply the transformation. And we need to kind of try to line this up. As you can see, the hoofs don't line up. So let's go ahead and move this so that it is somewhat in the right direction. And then I'm going to free transform this again and I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. And so your goal here, again, try to make it look natural. Try to make it look like it actually belongs there. Again, this is going to look really funny. You're like, what's going on here? This looks terrible. I'm going to show you how to fix that in just a second though. So, we have this set up, kind of. It looks horrible. And then you have options, if you have newer Photoshop, to, um, you can do stuff like puppet warping, where you can actually go through and change some of these and really mess with it, but I'm not going to do that because that is way too complicated, to be honest with you. We can perspective warp. You can really, uh, the nice thing with, if you, if you learn how to use puppet warp, is that you can add these points where you want these things to line up to, which is kind of nice. But I am doing a terrible job of it. But anyway, so I'm going to stop messing with all that. But look and try to adjust this so that the, the, the feet basically line up with the hoose as much as possible. So we're just going to kind of pick a happy medium here and go with it. And so we're pretty close there. Most of them are at least in the general direction. So the last thing we're going to do to the shadow layer to try to make it look at least not so like um, cut out here, like how it's just kind of laying over like this gradient, we're going to change that layer to a multiply layer on our blending modes over here. And what that's going to do is it's going to eliminate all of these white pixels. And so that way, if this all works, you see how that works? Crazy, huh? Bet you didn't expect that to happen. And so now you don't have all those white pixels and as it falls away it becomes less and less important. But here, towards his hoose at the beginning here, you're getting um, more of a transparent style uh, see through it looks more like a shadow so we're going to hit command D to deselect really quick so as you see we now have a little bit of a shadow and the shadow is not falling in a perfect direction I'm not doing a great job of this but I'm just trying to get you started here and show you how to create these how to start these and so now we have a shadow started what I would do here is probably bring down the opacity of the shadow a bit so that it's not quite so harsh and then the last thing I would do is layer mask out some of these parts of this because obviously your shadow is not going through that. And so again, you want it to look realistic. So we'll come through and we layer mask out. We're bringing back in the pure again like I was doing before. Bring up my opacity a little bit. You can probably hear me clicking away. And again, they can't go through the draft. So we'll go ahead and 
take those ones away. And these ones here, because I did a really crappy job aligning it, don't actually line up to the hoof. But we'll take some of these away. So in the water. Take some of these away. And so yeah, as you can see, I'm really not good at this at all because <laughs> I'm used to doing this under my own schedule, my own time, and making it look good how I want it to look good. But the point is, if you line the hoofs up properly, you learn how to warp the, the shadow properly and everything, you can see that as you look down here now, it looks like there's a shadow being cast. And you want to change the opacity so that it looks more natural, so it looks like it's supposed to be there. And honestly, it looked 100 times better when I did it on my PC when I was uh, getting ready for this. And you can adjust it afterwards if you want to try to move it or do whatever and try to get it to line up more. Maybe. You know. Yeah, I kind of screwed it up. Go to edit. Free transform. Sorry, I'm trying to make it look a little less um, terrible, to be honest with you. Oh, it's because I have a layer mask open. It's not going to allow me to do that, is it? Uh, well, sorry. But really, the point is, is that, as you can see, I mean, if we move this over to our ground over here where you can see it better you can see other than the part that I erased this looks like there's a shadow like if you were to have the giraffe standing over this there's a shadow falling away here with um, and it gets lighter as it gets further away and creates that effect you just need to do a better job than I did of actually lining it up and making it look perfect but those shadows are how you get things to look like they belong there things like you know, dodging and burning your objects so that uh, the sun, so that the light is falling on it properly, and then creating those shadows in your environment to make it look like the light is actually affecting that object. Because if everything else is casting a shadow, like in this situation, this pier is casting a shadow, uh, and he's not, then that then something's messed up. You know, and people are going to know that. So your goal is to make everything um, as good as possible, as far as like looking natural. So. I know this is a very extremely long video and a terribly done one at that, but if you spend some time, you can see how you can come up with kind of a cool looking composite. And if you really refine these edges, you go through and you figure out how to do these stuff, make these lines look clean, clean up this stuff, uh, spend some time making your selections look nice and clean so that they don't, you don't have these pixel bleed throughs that you're getting, things like that. It'll look a million times better. But obviously it took an hour just to show you how to do this much. Uh, and it looks like crap. So you can imagine that if you want to create a really good looking natural composite, it's going to take you a long time. Uh, use smart layers, um, adjustment layers if you need to so things can be non-destructive. Make sure you keep duplicates of layers so you can bring stuff back through if you need to. Uh, and just play and have fun and really uh, you'll, the more you do it the better you'll get. As you can tell based on the fact that I don't ever do composite work. You can tell I'm terrible at it. But I know enough about Photoshop to show you kind of how to do the things to get you started. To show you how to put these, how to select these things, cut them out, and put them into an environment, how to uh, duplicate some layers, how to burn some stuff. You know, just to kind of get you in the right direction. Really, um, it's just a matter of experience when it comes to Photoshop and doing things. Once you do it once, the next time you do it, it's going to go way faster. The next time you do it, it's going to go even faster. And so you just got to get used to it. And the fact that I was on a computer and, uh, a version of uh, the keyboard shortcuts and everything I'm not used to using. I obviously uh, took me a little bit longer than usual. But if there's any questions I can answer that I didn't cover, which is obviously a million things, uh, feel free to ask in the comments below. Send me a message. Uh, look me up on bensviewfinder.com or my Facebook um, daily posts. Hit me up there and I'll answer whatever questions I possibly can for you guys. If this uh, requires another follow-up video, I'll gladly do it for you to try to get you pointed in the right direction. Until then, guys, uh, thanks for following along, and hopefully I helped you at least a little bit, and uh, we'll see you again soon.